Finance thumbnails are everywhere, whether it's for investing, business tips, or even side hustle videos. And they all have one thing in common, bold and eye-catching style. But what if I told you you could make one in Photopea in just a few minutes? And even a beginner can do it. I'll walk you through the whole process step by step so you can start making these today. But if you want to skip all that, I got a free template linked in the description. Just plug in your image and text and you're good to go. Okay, so once you have Photopea open, it's going to look like this. If you notice mine looks slightly different, it's because I'm using the app version of Photopea. I will also leave a link in the description of how to download Photopea. Once you have Photopea open, all you want to do is go to New Project. Once you're here, you can either type it in manually, 1280 by 720 or you can go to YouTube thumbnail right here. Click on it and click create. The first thing we need to do is get a background. Now you can either look up the background on Google or if you already have the background saved, use that. But for me personally, I'm going to use a plugin. The plugin is called Pexels. So if you don't have this, I'm gonna show you how to get it right now. So go up to window, plugins, and type it in here. I have made videos on a bunch of plugins that I like to use. If you guys want to see that, go ahead and check it out on my channel. Once you're here, click install and click this X. Then you'll see on the right, there's a new button. Here you can search for photos that you'd like. I'm gonna search up office. Once you search up office or whatever you search up, a bunch of pictures are going to pop up. Then you can scroll down and find the one you like. So I found the one I want to use. It's right here. Go ahead and click on that. And you'll see there's a button right here that says size. Go ahead and click on that and choose either large or double large. Once you do that, click add to document. Then click this button again to get rid of it. From here, I'm going to scale up this picture so that it fits inside of the canvas. Once you're done with that, click this check mark to confirm it. The next thing I'm going to do is add some blur to this background. Go up to filter, blur, and lens blur. Then you can leave everything as is and click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the background a little bit darker. So make sure your background layer is selected, go up to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and turn down the brightness a bit. I'm going to go to about here. Once you're done with that, click OK. If you ever want to edit those again, you can go over here below smart filters, double click on it and adjust the settings. Now we're going to organize this a little bit. So we're going to delete the background and then we're going to change the background that we're currently using to a different name. So we'll just type in background just to stay organized because it'll make this whole process a whole lot easier. The next thing we need is our subject. So again, you can either use a picture of yourself that you've taken, or you could find a picture online, or you can use Pexels once again to find it. So I actually found my subject online because I wanted a high quality picture. And as you can see, it is gigantic. So if you want to scale it, click Control, Alt, and T, and drag these boxes to shrink it a little bit. It is a giant picture. I'm going to go to about here. And I'm going to remove this background. So select, remove background. There we go. Now our subject is cut out. Then I can bring him into the middle of the photo. So about right here. I'm going to scale him up just a little bit. Okay, so there's one thing I'm going to do because when I cut out that photo, you'll see there's a little white outline around him. It's pretty simple and I don't know if there's a better technique for this, but what I like to do is I like to double click on that layer. I like to go to inner shadow or inner glow. It's up to you. I'm gonna change the angle to 90 and you can adjust the opacity until it kind of goes away like that. Click okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chart. So it's pretty simple to make this actually. You just wanna to go to your pen tool on the left side of your screen and we are going to start down here, left click once to make a point. And every time you left click, it'll make a new point, right? But let's say you don't want it to be so rigid. If you make a new point, hold left click, you can drag it to make it smoother. So let's redo this like this, okay? We're just gonna go through him and connect back to the start. It doesn't have to look pretty because it'll be hidden. Once you do this, go up here to shape. I'm gonna go with red because this is the bottom of the chart. You can go with whatever color you want. I'm just gonna go with red. Then I'm going to go over here and change the blend mode to overlay. And then I'm gonna drag it below the subject so it's behind him. Now double click on that chart layer you just made, go to stroke, the size is up to you. I'm gonna go with 20 just to make it easy. I'm going to change the color to red. Next up, I'm going to add an outer glow. So check the outer glow box here. I'm going to change this color to red. Click OK. So now the color is red. I'm going to go with, we'll try color dodge and adjust the spread and size just to see how it looks. I actually like screen more because it stands out from this part. So we're going to go with screen and these are my settings. It'll probably vary a little bit so you don't have to exactly copy me, but you get an idea. Once we're done with this, click OK. We'll rename this to uh, chart uh, left just to keep track of everything. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but on this side and going upward. So we're going to start here. Um, if that starts happening, make sure you deselect this. So go up to make selection, click OK and hit Control D. 
this will get rid of that selection then you can start again okay connect back to the start click shape this time i'm going to go with green and click ok change the blend mode to overlay double click on that layer click stroke all the settings should be saved except for the color so all you have to do is change the color same for the outer glow it's so easy guys i'm telling you once you do this you'll be able to make so many other thumbnails with what you learned from this video okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add our text so go to your text tool on the left and type in whatever number you want i'm going to start out with zero dollars like this for the font i'm using this one right here but a few other good ones are luckiest guy indigo is a great one um one that's not in photo p is lemon milk but i like that one that one's a classic uh resolve sans is pretty good too but it's also not a photo p font so just search around for a font you want i like this one so i'm gonna go with this one click that check mark hit Control alt t scale it up i'm gonna put it down here in like the middle of the picture like so i'm gonna hit Control c and Control v this time i'm gonna move this one over here and change the number to like one hundred thousand dollars okay check mark this time i'm gonna move it above the chart or you can leave it in here it doesn't matter it's up to you i just want you guys to learn from this and apply it in your own designs you don't have to copy this at all just take what you learn from this you know like how to make charts or how to make different text styles all that i just want you guys to learn from this now we're going to edit the text so we're going to start out with the zero dollar layer double click on it i'm going to make a drop shadow and i'm just going to adjust the distance and maybe the opacity everything else i leave the same make sure it's a 90 degree angle next up we're going to go to gradient overlay change the scale to five which is the lowest click on this color box here and drag this one like all the way to the left pretty much and we're going to click inside of that white one and change it to red now we're going to click on the black one and change it to a slightly darker red you'll see it gives it some more depth right here click ok now we're going to do the same for this but instead of red we're going to go with white so just change those colors click ok Click OK. I might make that a little bit brighter. OK. OK. Click Drop Shadow. Leave it as is. And click OK again. I made the background a little bit darker. OK, so now we're going to make this look a lot prettier. So we're going to click on the top layer, go down here to this half circle, and click on Color Balance. For these settings, I went with negative 15, 0, and 35. It gives it like a bluish hue to it, which I think looks pretty good. Next up, we're going to click that half circle again, but this time go to curves. We're going to go up on this line, down on this line slightly. And the last thing we're going to do with these half circles is vibrance. Click on vibrance. We're going to go with 35 and 5. Now, if you don't want the blue hue so much, just turn the opacity down on the color balance a little bit and it'll get rid of it slightly. Next up, we're going to add a light spot above his head. So we're going to zoom out a little bit with the zoom tool. I'm going to click new layer button. Make sure it's on top of everything else. I'm going to go to my brush tool. I'm going to hold alt and right click and drag it up to make it as soft as possible and right to make it big. Make sure this top box is white and click above his head. Like so. We can zoom in. It looks pretty good. One of the last things we're going to do is we're going to add a bloom. So how we're going to do this is go up to window plugins. We're going to use super bloom right here. Click install. Click that X. Now it should pop up over here. It looks like this. Click on that. Now you can leave everything the same or you can adjust it. I'm going to leave everything the same and click add to document. Now from here, just adjust the opacity so it's not as strong. Now the last thing we're going to do is click on the subject, go up to filter and camera raw. Here we're going to crank that texture crank the clarity quite a bit, maybe even dehaze, and then click OK. You'll see before and after. Just makes him stand out a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the bloom on him quite a bit. So click on your bloom layer, go here to add a raster mask, click on it, go to your brush tool, make sure the top box is black so that you can click and erase the bloom around him. Just on the inside, and you'll see before and after it just looks a little bit better and makes him stand out more. I'm going to make the background a little bit darker as well, so go back to the brightness and contrast, smart filter, and turn down brightness quite a bit. I'm also going to adjust the hue and saturation on this guy, so I'm going to go up to image, adjustments, hue and saturation, and make him not so red. Crank the saturation a little bit, 
and click OK. Now it is time to export, so go up to File, Export As, either PNG or JPEG. I'm going to go with JPEG, 100% quality, and click Save. And that's it. Now you've got yourself a clean, pro-looking finance thumbnail in just a few minutes. But don't stop there. If you want more templates, overlays, and graphics packs, I've got a whole collection free to download on my Gumroad website. The link will be down in the description. And if you want to share your designs, get feedback, or just chill with other creators, join the Discord. The link is in the description.